Uh, well, at the end of that season, you end up getting traded. No, I just I signed a one year deal. It was a one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it was a okay, one year deal. Um, I ended up trying to get on with uh, I think the Mavs or and uh, a little a little bit with the uh, with the uh, Spurs, but it just you know they already pretty much had a roster set, and unless I was going to do something spectacular, I wasn't going to get on that roster. Right, and essentially that was the end of your NBA career. Right. Um. You end up signing uh, with the Zhejiang Golden Bulls. Hey, you said you said you said it better than I could. <laughs> okay, in, in China. Yeah, CBA team out there. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, but how did it feel at that point to really beat the end of your NBA career? Honestly, man, I was so tired of the like. You got to remember, like when I came into the league, man, like I was that guy, bro. So. I was used to starting. Like, you couldn't tell me. Like, going into a game and not starting, like, that's foreign. That was foreign to me. Like, I couldn't even I couldn't even imagine that. So, by the time I got to experience those moments with D'Antoni where you have a coach tell you that no matter what you do, you're not going to play. And then you, you know, you get on with uh, the heat. And no matter how good a shape you're in, no matter what you do in practice, you're not going to really touch the court. Um, then you get – to, you know, you go to Dallas and you dominate in camp and you know you and, and you're not gonna make the team no matter what. I I was looking forward to going to China. I'm like, fuck it. At this point, I just wanna play. I just wanna hoop. I can get some good money over there hooping. Um, let me go out there and play. Um China treated me very well. I'm talking about like you're a superstar over there. If you started on any NBA, if you played on any NBA team, like you go to China, bro. They treat you like you they act like I was LeBron or something like that. Right, because Stephon Marbury was over there, basically the the king of China yeah. when it comes to basketball. Yeah, and, and Steph was telling me like, man, you know, he's like Eddie, man. Well, they ain't call me. He called me City. Everybody calls me City. He like, man, City, you could get, you could do it big over here. You could do it how I'm doing it over here. You just got to really embrace it. And I really just couldn't, man. I couldn't, I couldn't embrace being around people not talking English, like sleeping on these hard beds, practicing on these hard floors, hurting my knees and like people smoking cigarettes everywhere you go, like in elevators, in the locker room, they're coming in there smoking cigarettes. Some of the Chinese players were smoking cigarettes after the game. I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't get used to this shit, man. Like, hell no. Um, so I just was like, man, you know what? Let me, let me, let me go back home and, and try and figure it out from, from there. Right. You played your last game in February of 2013. Right. And then you went back home. And uh, was it that next year that uh, your wife, Patricia Curry, joined Basketball Wives LA? Patrice, uh, yeah. She had been asking me to do it for a while, man. And I'm like, I wanted to move to LA. And she was like, you know what? If if we move to LA, you got to let me do Basketball Wives. And I'm like, all right, cool. As long as I don't have to be on it, we could, <laughs> we could, we could, we could do it. Um, I still ended up having to be on there a couple episodes, but yeah, that's she ended up joining basketball wise. Yep. How's that overall experience? Because a lot of times when you know when you have couples and one or both of them join reality TV, it kind of causes problems along the way. Yeah, I think you got to be. I think you got to be ready for uh, whatever the the director wants you to do, whatever the producer wants you to do. They kind of dictate the narratives on those shows. Um, and if that's not your personality, if that's not your character, then that show is not for you. Um, they're going to end up kicking you off. They're going to write you off or you're going to just stick out like a sore thumb. And that's pretty much how it was. She just wasn't that type of lady, man. She's a, She really carries herself a different way. Um, she wasn't going to get on there and act a fool with the girls and throw drinks on somebody or let somebody throw a drink on her or get on there and fight somebody and... It's not like they were going to like let you fight and then and everything would be cool after that. You're going to fight and you're probably going to go to jail and and you got to figure it out on your own. Like it's just like, damn, what do I, like so it was like one of those one of those situations. Um they wanted me on the show. I got on there a couple of times. The first show I went on, I think they had me go to a uh, they told us it was just going to be a regular party. They was going to set it up like a club night or something like that for my birthday. And they ended up bringing strippers out, like a little woman stripper. Come to find out, <laughs> come to find out, she was like a porn star. Like, uh, her name was Bridget the Midget. She was like a porn star, bro. I'm like, Patrice, what do you got me doing, man? Like, 
<laughs> I'm trying to just chill out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm in LA. I'm chilling. I, I might le- weed is legal out here. Just let me just relax. And it was it was crazy, bro. It was really crazy. So I'm like, I don't want to be on the show no more. And it got to a point where they were just trying to force me to come on the show, and I just really didn't want to do it. And um, so they, you know, they they were like, well, either you're gonna be on the show, or Patrice is gonna have to turn up and get on here and smack somebody or do something. And she didn't really want to do that. So we kind of parted ways. Got it. And was it uh, 2018, you ended up going back to China again and playing? Yeah, one of my one of my good friends ended up being a GM over there and asked me to come over there. So I went over there for a little bit. Yeah, for a year? Yep. I don't, it was, I don't think it was a year. It was a little, it felt like a year, man. Shit, every day, it's like dog years over there, bro. Every day is like 15 days or something. It feels like, I don't know, man, it's crazy. Every, like, every 15 days feels like one day. Well, I don't know, however, you know what I mean. Like, that shit's, it's a drag over there, bro. It's a drag, it really is, bro. But, I mean, I really, I ain't gonna lie, the last time I went, I really kind of embraced it. I really kind of realized, like, damn, everybody don't get to see this. You know, I really, I've always been that type of person where it's like, man, I don't want to just go to Jamaica. I want to bring my family to Jamaica. I don't want to just see this shit. I don't want to just explain it to them. I don't want to send pictures. I want people to see this. So when I went to China the last time, I really was taking it in. Like, damn, I want to bring my family to China because I want them to see this. I want them to experience this culture and just the difference so they can have an appreciation for where we are and just be more, you know, just be well-versed in in, in just the world, you know, and, and different cultures and things. Well, Eddie Curry, man, uh, a hell of a journey, uh, a hell of a journey. And uh, I mean, it just kind of shows, you know, when you say, you know, you hear songs like more money, more problems and people think, oh, that's not true. People just talking shit. It's yeah. like, no, no. I mean, the reality is, is that, you know, you could tell by, you know, what we went through, the more money you got, the more problems start to rise and the more bullshit you had to deal with. And, you know, you're making more, but you got to deal with more. And, you know, there's always someone there that's ready to take it from Absolutely. you by, by any means necessary. By any means necessary, bro. And and it's crazy because everything is so largely based on like your pub, your public persona, your public people's perception of you in the public. And forever, I always kind of looked at it like, man, I'll just... The best way to get out the news is to be quiet. I always kind of mm. felt like if I if I if I give a rebuttal to what dude said in that article, if I come out and say something, then it just lives longer, and then it becomes my word against his. And let me just be quiet because if I wait long enough, something else crazy will happen, and then everybody will forget about that. And I did that so many times, over and over and over again, to the point where it really didn't work out that way. People kind of developed these, you know, stigmatism, these these stereotypes about me. And yeah, man, it's 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 hard to live that stuff down. And I just kind of got to a point where I'm like, you know what, let me go ahead and and tell, you know, my truth about what's going on. That's when I ended up doing the the article with the Players Tribune and they, and it's dope because they actually gave me and my wife a a podcast now. So we do like a relationship podcast based on movies and things like that. But we really draw a lot of parallels to our life. A lot of like we talk about the um just having kids outside the marriage and things like that, like and how we were able to get through it and you know, it's 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 therapeutic to us because uh, a lot of it is stuff that I've never said to her. I'm hearing feelings that she had that she's never said before. And, um, you know, it's really dope. And I'm just, you know, I was happy to get that, that type of opportunity to just heal in public. Um, and I think that that's dope. That's what it is. Eddie Curry, man, I appreciate you sharing your story. Wish you all the best. And I think you have, you know, you still have a lot of stories left. You oh, know man, it's, I mean? some, I like it's, just it's some started. shit, bro. It's some shit. You got to have me on again. We'll... We'll get into it for real, because I could... It's so much, bro. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. It's a lot. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. That's why when 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 uh when you first reached out, I'm like, man, let me talk to my wife, because I knew that I had to be in a situation that she's got to be ready to relive this. she got to be ready to, to hear this again. And I think with us having a podcast and us, like, like reliving it together, like, I kind of feel like it just kind of made sense to... It, it was okay to voice it again, I guess. Well, I appreciate you choosing our platform as Thank a place you. to actually voice it, man. Wish you all the best, man. Thanks, Until Brad. Next I appreciate time. it. Peace.